Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. I'm Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Today, someone writes, Dear Pastor, I watched a video in which a man claims that the doctrine of predestination started with Augustine and wasn't part of early church doctrine. He approaches it as being against Calvinism, but I know that Luther was a student of Augustine as well. His main thesis, and some other people I've listened to also claim this, is that Augustine, when he converted from Manichaeanism, introduced Gnostic ideas of determinism into the church in the form of the doctrine of predestination. I was wondering what you thought of this, whether predestination and total depravity started with Augustine, or if the man in the video is off base. The accusation that Augustine brought Manichaean determinism, or fate, into the church, uh, it's not a new one. In fact, Augustine was accused of this in his very lifetime by the Pelagians. In book two of his treatise against two letters of the Pelagians, he denies the accusation and he shows it for what it is. He writes, When they malign us by saying that we maintain fate under the name of grace, because we say that God's grace is not given on account of our merits, beyond a doubt, they confess that they themselves say that it is given on account of our merits. When people accuse Augustine of introducing Manichaean or Gnostic determinism into the church under the guise of predestination, they are attacking the gratuity of grace. Uh, that grace is given as a gift prior to any human merit and without regard for future merit. This is the core of anti-Augustinianism, uh, both in, its, in his own day and in ours. Now, predestination is simply the touchstone for anti-Augustinianism since predestination is God's choosing from eternity, the ones to whom he will give the gift of faith and perseverance in time, prior to and without regard for human merit. Now, towards the end of his life, it was monks in, uh, in southern Gaul who took umbrage at Augustine's teaching about the priority of grace. They believed that it was through the grace of creation, which is given to all people, everyone had the natural ability uh, to know good and evil, and that they are equally capable of choosing between the two. This means that, by his own powers, uh, man can uh, believe the gospel or begin spiritual movements, then uh, God gives grace, which is necessary for the increase of that faith. Now, for a lack of a better term, we call those uh, people semi-Pelagians, though in reality, they had a lot more in common with Augustine than they did with Pelagius. But the bottom line is that they wanted to maintain human agency and responsibility in spiritual things, specifically the priority of those. Uh, and the same is true of the anti-Augustinian movement in contemporary Protestantism. They are Arminians who want election to mean God's eternal plan to have a people who are his by their own powers and choice, rather than what it is scripturally, uh, that it is um, God's choosing from eternity his people to whom he will give grace. So the issue really isn't so much about predestination or total depravity, it's about the priority of grace. Can we have a good will towards God prior to grace? Can we begin spiritual actions prior to grace? Can we repent and believe the gospel prior to God giving us grace? Now to bolster the argument then, uh, contemporary Arminians argue uh, as the semi-Pelagians of Augustine's day argued, that this doctrine of grace was new. And like the first accusation, Augustine defended himself against this one too in his own day, the, the charge of novelty. He argued that the church has always taught predestination because the scriptures teach predestination. And the reason that Augustine was the first to write uh, entire treatises on the matter was that um, until Augustine's time, it hadn't been called into question. Now, in his defense of his doctrine, Augustine includes several examples of contemporary bishops who taught predestination and final preservation as God's gracious gift. So, in his work entitled On Rebuke and Grace, he quotes the 3rd century Cyprian's words. Uh, the title of chapter 4 in book 3 of Cyprian's work, 
the testimony against the Jews. He says that we must boast in nothing since nothing is our own. Now, Augustine explained those words then in his in another work, The Gift of Perseverance. He said, By this, Cyprian taught without any ambiguity that the true grace of God, that is the grace which is not given in accord with our merits. And since God foreknew that he would give this grace, these words of Cyprian undoubtedly preached predestination. He also cites his older contemporary, Ambrose of Milan, that's the bishop that baptized Augustine, Ambrose wrote in his commentary on Luke 1, verse 3, Whoever follows Christ can, if asked why he wanted to be a Christian, answer, It seemed good to me. In speaking thus, he does not deny that God found him good. It is God, indeed, who prepares the human will. Augustine also then quotes Gregory of Nazianzus, his 41st oration, where Gregory says, Confess, my friends, the Trinity to be of one Godhead, or if you will, of one nature, and we will pray the Spirit to give you this word, God. He will give it to you, I well know, inasmuch as he has already granted you the first portion and the second. Meaning, he who gives us faith will also give us the confession of the faith. Augustine uh, concludes from these citations, If they knew that God gives these things, and also knew that he fore, uh, and also knew that he foreknew that he would give them, and could not fail to know to whom he would give them. They undoubtedly knew the predestination, which against the new heretics we vigorously and diligently defend it, as it was preached by the apostles. Now Augustine doesn't mention Gregory's preaching on Romans nine sixteen from his thirty seventh oration, but he could have. Uh, there, uh, there Gregory, excuse me, said. When you hear to whom it is given, add, and it is given to those who are called and to those who incline that way. Such are taught by this word that even to wish well needs help from God, or rather that even to choose what is right is divine and a gift of mercy of God. Next, since to will is also from God, he has attributed the whole to God with reason. So even the good will which seeks God is from God himself is what Gregory is saying. And that's no different than Augustine's dictum. It is certain that it is we that will when we will, but it is he who makes us will what is good. Now, some modern Arminians will also then cite various early church fathers to demonstrate uh, the natural ability of man in spiritual things, and therefore that Augustine's teaching was novel. Now, I've noticed when doing this, they make a few mistakes. First, they often cite spurious writings as if they were genuine. Uh, so Clement of Rome is sometimes quoted as saying, He who is good by his own choice is really good, but he who is made good by another under necessity is not really good, because he is not what he is by his own choice. But this isn't from First Clement. It's from the 3rd century Clementine homilies. It, it, it's a body of writings falsely attributed to Clement. Uh, Clement himself, in 1 Clement 2, verse 4, can speak of the number of God's elect, and in 1 Clement 29, 1, that it is God who has made us partakers in the blessings of his elect. Ignatius of Antioch is also sometimes cited uh, as saying um, that if anyone is truly religious, he is a man of God, but if he is irreligious, he is a man of the devil, made such not by nature, but by his own choice. But again, this is spurious. This is from the longer recension of the Ignatian letters, which date to the 4th century, not the very early 2nd century, and therefore not authentic. The second thing I've noticed about their patristic citations is they ignore the fact that when the fathers uh, wrote against a particular heresy, they often spoke more freely, more loosely about other doctrines, assuming that their statements weren't going to be taken wrongly. And third, uh, they fail to acknowledge that there are times when the fathers just simply spoke inappropriately and were even wrong about things, uh, which is why their statements should be understood within the context of all of their writings and ultimately judged by the scriptures. So yes, the man in this video that you've watched is off base. Uh, while Calvinism reintroduced several of Augustine's more extreme positions like irresistible grace and absolute predestination to damnation, the church took the middle way of a modified Augustinianism at the Council of Orange in 529, 
which didn't throw the baby of gratuitous grace out with the bathwater of Augustine's extreme positions, but confessed the priority of grace in spiritual matters. Hope this helps. If you have something you would like to ask the pastor, email me at atpholycross at gmail.com. We'll get to your question as soon as I am able. Thanks a lot. God bless.